Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Italian party bread. That's right, if you like bread and you like to party, you are gonna absolutely love this party bread, which is what I'm calling this meat and cheese stuffed braided loaf, since that's too long to be a name. Plus, I'm actually trying to create a new category of bread featuring this very simple and exciting technique. And above and beyond all that, to me, this just looks like a party. And if you don't think so, I'm not sure I want to party with you. I'm just kidding. I'll party with anyone. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And to begin, we're going to need a one pound ball of ready to go pizza dough, which you could make from scratch. But if you're busy with other party preparations, just buy some pre-made stuff from the store like I did. And what we'll do using just enough flour so it doesn't stick is roll this out to somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. All right, what is that, three sixteenths? But anyway, we're basically just gonna roll it out to the same thickness as we do for a thin crust pizza. Oh, and one tip for when you're rolling pizza dough, because it tends to be very elastic, what I like to do is roll it out a little bit and then stop and let it rest and relax for a couple minutes. And then I'll continue rolling. And I might even do that a couple times if it keeps stretching back. So don't be afraid to let your dough relax if it won't stay rolled out. Oh, and one more thing. To make the step where we roll up our meat and cheese easier, the closer we get to a rectangle shape, the better. Although I'm generally not very good at doing that, and I always seem to end up with something closer to an oval. But that's fine, because when it gets to about the thickness you want, we can always stop and sort of stretch out the corners with our fingers to get this a little more square. All right, so that's what I did. And then what we'll do once our dough is rolled out is go ahead and spread on some prepared pesto which, by the way, was sold very close to that pizza dough I bought. And for whatever reason you're not into pesto, a tomato sauce would work here, or even a nice cheesy white sauce. But the pesto was amazing and really did look gorgeous. But regardless of what you use, we'll go ahead and spread that over, leaving about an inch unsauced around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and lay over some thin slices of provolone, or of course the cheese of your choice. Just make sure it's sliced fairly thin because we're going to have to roll this up. And yes, if you press it down a little, grated cheese will work. And then once that's been cheesed, we can apply our prosciutto, which as you can see, I'm sort of tearing into these jagged irregular ribbons, which I think is going to look nicer once this is cut and braided. But I'm also doing that because the prosciutto I bought was really hard to separate. And of course, how generous you are with all these ingredients is going to be up to you. But keep in mind, like I said, we do need to be able to roll this up. So we'll lay down a generous, but not too, too generous layer of that. And then what I did next was not realize my battery on the camera had run out. So I was not able to film the beginning of me placing on some chopped up pickled peppers, which I think are incredibly important in this. All right, not only for the beautiful color, but those sharp, briny, acidic bits really do help balance the richness of our meat and cheese. And those were just your basic jarred Italian banana peppers. And that's it, once we're finished with our toppings, we will go ahead and roll this up. Of course, rolling in the direction that will give us the most length. And when we get to the end, because this was kind of ovalish, it's not a bad idea to kind of pull and stretch the dough so that we end up with some sort of semi-uniform log, which we will also sort of press down and flatten out a little bit. And then what we'll do once we have that in some sort of uniform shape is do a little bit of cleanup. And we'll apply a little more flour to the surface at which point I'm gonna grab my pizza wheel and attempt to cut this into three strips. And because I'm cutting through meat and cheese and peppers, I had to sort of use a combination of pressing, slicing, and rolling. But eventually I was able to get through. And we maybe could have used our bench scraper to cut that, or even a knife, I guess. But a nice knife on a metal table always seems a little wrong. But anyway, the point is get that cut into three strips as even as possible. And what this maneuver does for us is that it's gonna expose all those gorgeous layers of dough in our ingredients. All right, check that out. And once separated, what I was hoping to do here was braid these with all those exposed cut sides facing up. But then I had second thoughts, which are not a bad thing in the kitchen. All right, you're allowed to have second thoughts. But anyway, my concern was, was that if I braided this with all those cut sides facing up, maybe all that stuff would start falling out. So I decided to turn those strips on the outside back onto their side and just leave that one in the center facing up. At which point I forgot how to braid things. Well, actually not forget how to braid. Technically I forgot how to start a braid. I mean, I know you wanna pinch all the ends together, 
but then I never can seem to remember which one goes over which one to start. But after a few seconds of fumbling and false starts, I just grabbed a piece and started overlapping. And then once I did that, it all sort of came together. And also, please keep in mind, once we shape this and it bakes, the precision of your braiding is not going to be that noticeable. And then once we do have that braided, we will carefully shape that into some kind of small circular wreath without pressing and smashing everything down too much. All right, it really is all these jagged exposed edges that gives this thing its amazing, unique look. And there really is no wrong way to do this, just as long as you make sure your ends get tucked well underneath. And that's it, somehow, someway, my Italian party bread was shaped and ready to transfer onto a line baking sheet. And no, this does not need any kind of egg wash or drizzle of olive oil or dusting of Parmesan. All right, thanks to the fat and the meat and cheese, this is gonna create its own lustrous finish. And that's it, our party bread is now ready to transfer into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so, or until beautifully browned and looking like one of the greatest things you've ever seen. I mean, come on. Okay, it's like a small Italian deli exploded inside a loaf of bread. And yes, of course we have to let this cool down a little bit, but it's fine to serve warm, which I did. And if you think this looks good, just wait until you taste it. Okay, it's sort of like a really nice, crispy, perfectly made Italian meat and cheese panini in a sliceable loaf of bread form. And of course, prosciutto and provolone are great together. But when you combine that with that herbaceous, garlicky hit from the pesto and those briny, sweet and sour bits of the pepper, it is just a tremendous bite of food. And please remember, we're trying to create a new category of bread. So this is not a recipe, it's a method and a technique. And the only reason this is an Italian party bread is because we're using Italian ingredients. Okay, we could easily make this a Spanish party bread if we use serrano ham and manchego cheese and membrillo and maybe some Spanish olives. Or of course we could do a French party bread with Gruyere cheese and Dijon mustard and a nice French ham. Okay, so please feel free to experiment. I mean, you are after all the Bonnie and Clyde of what you put inside. But having said all that, this particular combination really was incredible. And I guess if you're doing this for a party, you could slice it up ahead of time. But because it is so beautiful in its whole form, I'd probably just serve it as is and put a knife next to it and let people slice off their own pieces. And hopefully they can control themselves, which I will tell you is not the easiest thing to do. Oh, and then there was one more thing I wanted to mention. If you do have any leftovers, which is highly unlikely, but if you do, what you want to do is cut a couple thick slices and then brown it on both sides in a little bit of olive oil over medium heat. And believe it or not, you might even like this better than a slice of the original freshly baked bread, especially if you include a nice runny egg to dip in it. But officially, I'm going to call it a tie, since both ways really are unbelievably amazing. But whether you end up with leftovers or not, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.